Hi guys, my name is Peter and today I'm doing the first part of a snow tessellated material tutorial. Uh, the whole tutorial will be divided in several parts because it's kind of a big topic, even though the material is not really complex. So, let me just show you the end result for a second. This is the already tessellated material that I showed in a previous video about uh, tessellated snow. So as you increase the amount of snow, you can see that First, the snow appears only on the top. On the sides there is no snow. And as you increase the, the amount of snow more and more, it starts to pop out, because that's where the tessellation starts to work. It doesn't look realistic with uh, a lot of meshes, and you can advance it by yourself to fit uh, specific meshes. Uh, and specific geometry, basically. So, I just made a generic material, and I'm not yet planning to use it anywhere in the game, so I'm not advancing it more. But the concept it is like that, and you can play with it, and some some of the meshes, I would say more of the, m most of the primitive forms, they realistically become looking like covered by snow, I would say, yeah? There are some other parameters here that we will also uh, use, but Let's start, and this is the tutorial that uh, this is the result of tutorial that we uh, made previously. Uh, this is the basic snow material. Uh, it looks a little bit different because this is a different version of that, basically, but it has absolutely the same functionality. You can see here the base color, normal map calculation, roughness. Let's just say it's roughness. And if you did that tutorial, you can just straight ahead go and continue with this one. Uh, yeah, one thing is that I have to add the snow falloff parameter, I guess. Yes, this exponent, I would replace with the parameter which is a snow falloff. Uh, if you have it already, then you might not do this, but I would because I don't have it in this version of the material. Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, we will make things look like the snow is only covering the top of the material. Why is it important? Now, let it calculate right. Why? Yeah, right. Sorry for that, my GPU is still slow, I didn't change it, because GPUs nowadays cost a lot. Anyway, why is it important that snow only covers the top? Well, first of all, it's more realistic. Second, uh, of course, uh, you can tweak it so that it will be covering mostly the top and to some degree the sides, and this will be the most realistic version. And the third, which is the most important, is that when we go to the tess tessellation mechanism, if you cover uh, the sides of uh, your mesh with the snow and tessellate it, the snow will pop up to the left, to the right, to the bottom, and this is not looking realistic at all. So covering the top of the mesh with the snow is really important, I would say and you can tweak it and work and you know play with it a lot to make it look like you want it to look and let's start now let's go somewhere in a free space here and let's add vertex vertex normal in world, world space and what this does is basically tells us uh, what is the normal direction for each vertex so this is a per vertex uh, input and what we need is that we need to somehow understand um, w in, in which parts of the mesh which we cover with our material um, we want to place the snow and in which part we won't we don't want to play this to place the snow sorry and vertex normal basically gives us that information so we have x y and z coordinates here and if we look at that let's start previewing this note Give a little time. You can see the box will be good. Uh, this is the blue one. That's basically this. Uh, this input is something like 001 in RGB spectra, so 001. This is red for 100. This is green for 010, and so on. Others are basically combinations, or or yeah, yeah combinations. So why is it so? Well, the Z coordinate is going up. So if we write 0, 0, 001, let's do it right now, basically. If we write 0, 0, 001 and we multiply 
our vertex normal world space to 0, 0, 1, we will only get as a result uh, those vertices and those pixels which are basically covering this vertex, vertex area uh, which have uh, the vertex normals up. So if I start reviewing that, you can see this is this goes to the blue, but everything else is zero. And if we go here, we can get this nice kind of a fall off. Yeah, and that's what we do need. So now uh, we don't want it to be three vector because it's just it's giving us blue color. So let's uh, take it and mask. Uh, take a mask of it uh, by the blue and now what we get is we get a very uh, simple basically a multiplier and how do we apply it to our material well if we stop reviewing that we go here we can see that we have our clamp and this clamp goes to the lerp uh, which is basically building our uh, base color from the <clears throat> from the diffuse texture and from our snow map so everything we need to do is we need to take this mask b create this multiply node and yeah let's just clamp let's just multiply this clamp by our basically by our multiplier our upward let's let's just let, let's make a comment here and we say this is upward pixels only uh, which is not really uh, clear let's make it like that sorry if this is not really good in terms of you know English language I'm not native speaker so there might be some error but okay, when we do that, if we put this in a lerp, uh, you can see now that the diffuse texture will show off only on top. And if we go here, we can have this uh, subtle, very nice fall off. And here in the sides, I hope you can see it. I can, I can move the light actually. Yeah. You can see that on the sides uh, there is no diffuse snow texture anymore. So we got our result, but it still looks like uh, at least very, very wet or covered by oil uh, rock. Why is it so? Well, because roughness and because normal maps are still being calculated by this clamp, not our uh, clamp by clamp which is multiplied by uh, the multiplier. And we can fix this very simple. We can carry this here and let, let's move on to that so now the roughness is also being cal calculated with this uh, multiply equation or expression sorry and again you can see now that on the sides uh, there is no more no more no no more this shiny uh, looking texture and this is more realistic. And let's finish that by also updating the normal map calculation. Like that. So now the normal map will also be looking like that on the top. Okay. So let me just quickly look. Did I forget anything? Yeah, so this is the first part of tutorial of the tessellated snow material. Uh, yeah, sorry, one thing, of course. Uh, if you have it like that, uh, the bottom will also have the snow here, because this will give a negative value here in the in this, you know in a bottom face vertices. So just make sure that you clamp. Uh, sorry. to something like from 0 to 1, right? So there is no minus 1. And then you put it to this multiplier. Now you wait. And... Uh, 
come on, you should recalculate it. Yeah, it does recalculate. I don't know why it's so slow when I make a record, but sorry for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, now we achieved this uh, situation where the snow mostly appears on the top. In next part, in next part of the tutorial, uh, we will go into the tessellation and we will make sure that there will be some snow on the sides also. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope uh, this tutorial was useful and see you next time. Bye.